body of Christ and the body of Christ says, Amen. Amen. Very welcome to each and every one of you. I won't call out the new members on camera. <laughs> Let us close our eyes or however you prefer to pray. <coughs> we thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. We ask you, Father, to call to peace now, everyone here. Father, this whole week we were running around, we were working, we were just getting to the next thing. And now, Lord, we ask you to bring peace to us so we can learn from you, so we can study you, so we can love you a little bit deeper every day. Thank you, Father, that you love us so, so much that our human minds cannot comprehend the love our Jesus has for us. Thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, teach us, lead us. Amen. 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 So, we just said we were working through the Gospels. It took us three years. That is what it took this church to go from Matthew 1 to the end of John. And it was a blessed experience. Mm -hmm. We've learned so much about Jesus. Most people say when you just get baptized, when you just receive the Holy Spirit, you should start reading in the book of Acts. Where we will start today, Acts 1 from verse 1. I don't agree. The fact is, when you come to the realization that you need a Savior, that you need Jesus, that you need the Messiah, you study Him first. Because He gave us a direct order. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. How will we follow someone we don't know? He needs to teach us new things. We died in the water. We were crucified with him. We were raised with him. Now this is a new life. The old person is dead. The old person did things the human way. The new person needs to learn how to do things. We're you, you're born, and I, don't, I know a lot of people say, no, you can't say um, they're spiritual babies when they're just born again. Yeah, yeah, okay. I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> okay. But they have a lot to learn. They have to learn to renew their minds. To not go into negative thinking. To not let the enemy deceive you in a direction of thinking the Lord would not want you. Why? Because we love the Lord. Because we are obedient to the Lord. Because he made us promises. He said, I, I am here to give you life. And life more abundantly than you've ever known. And we want that. We don't want a mediocre small little life. I want the life that Jesus has for me. He created me. He has the plan for me when he created me. He knows exactly what will make me happy because guess what? That's what the Lord wants. He wants his children happy. Oh, it's so hard being a Christian. No, there's so much joy. If you are truly Christian, if you are truly little Christ, those who died and was raised again, you will know the joy of the Lord. And he said, I will give you joy, not does the world give you so much more joy that cannot be taken from you. Joy that this messy world can't take from you. 
all hell could be breaking loose around you, you will have joy. And it is true. And we experience it and we love him and we seek him so much more, not just because what he has done for us, but because of who he is. And he deserves all the honor and the glory. So thank you, Father. Going into Acts 1 <clears throat> from verse 1. Now, who is the writer of Acts? It is Luke. So you can say this is the second book of Luke. First one, gospel. Second one, beginning of the church. Who's there? Just about everyone in the first couple of chapters. Everyone we got to know in the gospels, except of course Judas. We will learn from him uh, about him a little bit later in the book of Acts, but he died. He betrayed Jesus. He handed him over to the Romans and he took his own life. Uh, and you can't help but feel for Judas because scripture, Old Testament, I think it's Joel, the prophet Joel, predicted what Judas will do to Jesus. So the Old Testament is just the beginning, the story of Jesus until the Messiah comes, until Jesus was here. And now we're still studying Jesus and we're still following Jesus all this time after Genesis. Actually, the oldest book in the Bible is Job. Okay. <laughs> now what makes the book of Luke Interesting, it's the development of the church. Now let's read Acts 1. Listen to how Luke starts off. In my former book, Theophilus. Oh, Theophilus, Philophilus. I've heard a lot of different types of um, pronunciation of this word. Remember that it was Greek. So who knows? It's Greek to me. Okay. In my former book, Theophilus, let's just say that, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving in, given instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. Now stop there. In Luke, in the first book of Luke, he also writes to this person. The name Theolopolis, whatever you want to, to oh, we have to go study Greek to, to be able to pronounce his name. His name means lover of God or one who loves God. So how fitting is that? We can say Luke wrote this book to us. But the fact about doctors back then, think about the doctor now. Today, the doctors own you. Okay? You break a finger and that doctor owns you because you have to pay thousands of rands to get the finger fixed and keep going back, <laughs> pain medication. Now, back then, doctors were slaves. That's how it worked. If you had a wealthy family, you buy yourself a doctor and he becomes the family doctor. So Luke is answering to this person as his master. In Luke 1, he calls him master. He calls him above him. He, he, he pronounces his names as his master. Which means Theopilus, Philopilus, whatever you want to call him. Send Luke. 
We spoke about why the gospel of Luke is so important. Was Luke there with Jesus? No. Luke was not one of the original disciples. But Luke went out and wrote down, remember the Jewish law, where there's two or more witnesses, it must be true, went to witnesses and wrote down what they said, what Jesus did, what Jesus said, how he moved, how he, that is why Luke's gospel, and he's a learned man, a learned man, is not, the disciples are fishers and uh, tax collectors, but Luke is a doctor. He gathered information from different sources to put the book of Luke together to tell a story to his master, Theolopolis. I just can't say it. Always one word I can't pronounce. This. That's this one. Thank you, Lord. That's the only one tonight. Thank you. Give me an instructed tongue. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> He's answering to him. He's writing and answering to him what is witnessed. What he's seen. So his master must have heard something or known something about Jesus to send his personal physician, his doctor, out to gather information. And I think that's kind of beautiful. Mm -hmm. Doctors were slaves two half thousand years ago, and he wrote this in classic Greek, which is a higher form than, of Greek than any other books in the New Testament. So he wrote in classic Greek. He absorbed a mm, near. He sees things differently than the others. After a while, we will see that Luke's next direction, his master must have let him go at a stage or send him to walk with Paul. He became Paul's personal friend, traveling partner, and physician. Why? Because Paul really needed it. Because Paul took the, um, a couple of whippings and he was almost killed a couple of times and he, was, he moved from prison to prison. He needed a doctor. He had one. Luke was with him. Okay. Listen to that one sentence. He says, um, until the day he was taken up to heaven. Oh, no. I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until this day. What does this mean? It means Jesus just began. <coughs> Has he ended yet? No. <laughs> Will he end? No. He's not able to. Jesus won't end. He just wrote about what Jesus began. He's telling them this is a continual story. This will continue from generation to generation to generation. It will never, it has never stopped with Jesus. It will never stop with Jesus. It will just continue and go and go until eternity. Now, how long? Okay, the next generation continues to this day. Let's go on from verse 3. After his suffering, he's talking about Jesus, he showed himself to these men and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift, for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, 
but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. All right, stop there. Was it 40 days after the resurrection to Pentecost? No, it was 50. Yes, Passover and Pentecost was 50 days apart, not 40. Why is Luke saying 40? There could be one of two reasons. We already know that the Jewish calendar is not the same as the Greek calendar. Okay, they've got a month is like 29.5 days. That doesn't quite uh, offer the explanation yet. But there could have been a 10-day silence. There could have been 10 days in between when Jesus didn't show himself. But the rest of the time, he began and he continued. So what happened? Jesus died. On the cross, <coughs> he was resurrected, and now he's appearing to the disciples, teaching them. Remember last week we read eating with them, physically there, teaching them, leading them, still there. So he didn't just disappear, he's still there. He's still walking with them for 50 days. That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time to speak to the resurrection, re resurrected Christ, to learn from him. Remember, we spoke about God being fully man, Jesus being fully man and fully God while he was on earth. The fully man part was until the resurrection or until the crucifixion. Then he went back to be fully God. But he still walked among them as he does. Mm -hmm. And he promised the Holy Spirit to them. What did he say to his disciples while they were eating? He says, What's this note in Anakim? Some says. My eyes are not working with me tonight. No, four. On occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift of my gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Just stop there for a little bit. Hmm. Lots of churches use this to get rid of John's baptism. Yeah, they do. They do. Oh, but John baptized with water, but the Lord will baptize with the Holy Spirit. You know what? If I, the Lord is so good because he gives us answers to all these things as we go. There's something else that Jesus said that they also used to nullify the baptism of the believers. They say, Jesus said, but if you only believe in me, you will be saved. Listen carefully. You will in the future. Believe in me and you will be saved. They say, no, just believe in him and you will be saved. In Mark 16, verse 16, Jesus said, and those who believe and are baptized will be saved. In John 3, Jesus spoke to Nicodemus and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, truly, truly, I say unto you, if you are not born of water and spirit, you will not see the kingdom of heaven. You are not born again. Don't let anyone lie to you. Don't go into, because I used to do this. I would read this. In the beginning, when people were still attacking me, and I believed, I wondered, oh my goodness, am I right or am I wrong? 
Lord, if I'm wrong, correct me, please. I don't want to go to hell about this. You can't go to hell about this. <laughs> it's silly. Don't even think that. Because I thought, because so many people were attacking me with these verses, they must have something right and I have something wrong. The only thing that went wrong was the Holy Spirit taught me, men taught them. That's, that was, would you want to hear my Japanese? What went wrong? What went wrong? That's what went wrong. Okay. He speaks about John's baptism. He speaks about the water baptism. Why does he say, and a little bit after this, you will receive the promise. Then you will be, a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit was not there yet. Oh my goodness. Jesus passed the baton to the Holy Spirit. He said, I have to leave. Do you remember when he spoke to the disciples? He said, I have to leave you. But rejoice, if I do not leave you, the helper could, cannot come. The helper, the Holy Spirit, the Greek word parakletos, cannot come. The one called alongside you to help cannot come. Jesus had to finish his time on earth, teach the disciples the last little things they needed to know, leave them so the Holy Spirit could come. Was he, he was here. Okay, to those who don't understand, the Holy Spirit was upon people, not in people. We actually had a whole sermon about it last year, the difference of upon and in. Now he is indwelling. Our spirit's given up. How? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the baptism. We receive the Holy Spirit. We made an amazing, beautiful exchange. We said, Lord, take my spirit. I'll take yours. Amen. Thank you, Father. That's what we did. So the Holy Spirit was already leading them. He was there. He was upon them. He was with them, but he was not in them yet. That had to come. <coughs> mm. Verse 6. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit's, the Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What a beautiful promise the Lord made us. Do you see that every now and then, because we have the Holy Spirit, we can frown upon certain things the disciples are saying. Now, this is one of those little awkward moments again. They say interesting things. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has not yet come. <laughs> That's why. They don't quite always get it. And the only truthful one was Thomas. Remember, the disciple Thomas. But Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know where you are going? He was the only, tell us where you're going so we can follow you. He was the only, the other ones tried to be very spiritual. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Lord. Oh, amen. But they didn't know what he was saying. Thomas was the only one saying, what? What are you saying, Lord? Please tell us what you're saying so we can follow you. I do like Thomas. That's why I say there's never a dumb question. Ask Thomas. One day when you meet him in heaven, ask him, is there a dumb question? Thomas will tell you no. No dumb questions. Good questions, all of them. 
If you don't understand something, ask. No dumb questions. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> They are worrying about when. They are worrying about the kingdom of God. Because do you remember while we were studying through the Gospels, what the Jewish people believed the Messiah would come and do? He would come to establish a kingdom. They were waiting for a king. They were waiting for a man being born in a palace and they got one being born amongst the animals in a little stall. They were waiting for a king on a horse to come make war against Rome and drive them out of Jerusalem. And Jesus came into the city on a donkey to proclaim peace to everyone. They were expecting, and if you read through the prophets, you can see what went wrong. You can see what they have. Jesus established his kingdom on earth. Yes, here we are. Yeah, here we are. We are in this world. We are not from this world. If you want to know how much, just look at the people out there. Look at how they act. Look at how they talk. See what they do. And you will know just how much you do not belong to this world. You belong to a heavenly place you will go. For now, we are here. We occupy. That's what the Lord told us to do. For now, we are here. But we do know that we have another home. This dirt. It's not my own. Mm -hmm. So Jesus tells them, you know what? Why worry about when we will do this? How about I tell you what you must do? You will go to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth and tell them the gospel. Where else do we hear that in Matthew? The Great Commission. Go therefore to the ends of the earth and make disciples, baptize them, and teach them. That's what the Lord said. That is the Great Commission. He's telling them that again. Now, he's doing it again. He's saying, stop worrying when the kingdom will come. Can you see why there was an era? It wasn't that long ago. That people believe Jesus would be here like in, if it's not today, it will be next week. And that's great. That's wonderful. Because we do believe it can be today. It can be next week. He can come wherever you want. We will not tell the Lord. No one will know the hour. The Lord says no one of you will know. Two people will be in a field. One will be taken. One will be left behind. We will never know the time and date. He will not reveal it to us because people has to get married, babies has to get born. People has to keep living their lives. He will come, he says, like a thief in the night. You will not expect it when he comes. I talk people, all these doom prophets out there that tells you, oh, the world is going to end in... How, how many times was the world supposed to be ending by now? I remember one time over a New Year's season, I was watching television and they believed there was this some big rock in England. That was really funny. Okay, I watched that because it was funny. And that's actually very nasty, I repent. But they believed that that rock is an alien ship. Mm -hmm. And this was the time now. The world was going to end. The alien ship will, all the lights will come on. And everyone that stands against the alien ship and believes in the alien ship will be taken up into the alien ship to safety. That was real funny. Those people liked it for days. 
I was sitting there watching the people thinking, oh. I just, what? <laughs> I don't understand what you're doing. Why are you wasting your time? If the world is, it's a rock. Who told you it's a spaceship? It was apparently a movie or something and they got confused. <laughs> Some people are easily confused. Hmm. We know that. That was real funny. After that, it was the Mayan calendar. Those people ran out of space. They only had that much place to write. They ran out of space. They just happened to stop on that date to be continued. Mm. <gasps> it's going to be the end of the world because the Mayan were wise. They sacrificed their children. Oh, my goodness. We will not know. Don't let anyone tell you they know, because they don't. It can be today. And if it is, children of God, rejoice. Amen. Rejoice. We will not bow our knees at the end. We will bow our knees now. And when he calls, we will meet him. Mm -hmm. But they are waiting for this kingdom to happen. That's so sad. Let's go to verse 8. <coughs> now, where are we? Nine. nine. Okay. Are we in nine? Mm -hmm. After he said this, listen to how beautiful this is. Imagine all of them are standing on the Mount of Olives. Imagine. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes into and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taking, uh, taken away from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go in. Won't that be a beautiful day? But can you see them standing there? <laughs> Do you still see him? Everyone is intently, oh, where did he go? And all of a sudden, two angels or two men, as they say, stood there and said, hmm, what are we looking at? <laughs> what are you guys doing? <laughs> Where's your sunglasses? <laughs> what are we staring at? Because it's okay. He's gone. But he will be back. We all know. We've been waiting for generations. We've spoken about it before. The fact is, just because it's been more than 2,000 years on earth, that means it's like two days in heaven. It could be any time. It could be this generation or the next. We do not know. Do we really want it to be this generation or do we need to gather some more sheep for the flock? The Lord said, do not pray for that day to come, but I do sometimes. I'm going to be honest with you. When things get really, you get a bit agitated and the world is just like turning you and the persecution of the Christians and the... Um, the way people act and wonder what they are and all those things. You just think, oh, my goodness. Come, Jesus. <laughs> just just come. Just help us out here because this world's going crazy. And we have to stare at the crazy. And we have to adapt to the crazy all the time. Just sometimes I do. Sometimes I think, Lord, this was a good life now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's time <laughs> and the Lord will come for his children but he will not completely touch the ground that is what he said 
He told us. Okay, we're still getting there. Sorry. Verse, we were at verse 8. No? When you receive, yeah, we were past that. Okay, go back a bit to, to verse 8. Go, go look at that verse, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. That word power, the Greek word for that word is dunamis, which means dynamite. That is the power within you. No, I feel too weak. I just can't do it. No, you receive the Holy Spirit. You have dynamite in you, whether you know it or not. Whatever you are going to do with the dynamite in you, it's up to you. Up to you. You actually have unlimited power. The power of the Lord in you. The only restrictions, restrictions on you is you. You can pray and heal the sick. The Lord gave us all this. We're working through the, the gifts of the Spirit. We have prophecy. We have tongues. We have the interpretation of tongues. We have healing the sick. We have miracles. We have everything in us. And now we have to learn how to use it. Or not to. Decide not to. That's okay. Lots of people do. But the Lord knew when he sent them out and said, Jerusalem, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, let's, let's go. That's what we need to do. He knew we need a tower to do so. We need a tower to get over all this crazy going on around us every day. We really do need power, Lord. Because we are going to face crazy. Every generation a bit worse than the previous one. There's a lot of crazy out there. And we're going to face that. And we have to stay sane. Because we're not from this world. We're in this world, but not from it. We have to stay sane. We have to be the light of the world and we have to be the salt of the earth. We have to bring light and taste to life. So other, others will want to follow our master, serve our master. If you look at all the psychological issues out there, I, I don't understand why they don't just bow the knee now. Bow your knee before the Lord and come to Jesus Christ. He can make you whole. Why live life so difficultly? <laughs> Unstably. <laughs> Why? You have a choice. You have dunamis. You have power within you, which means power of the mind too. And now I'm not a new IG meditate person. No. I believe in Jesus. I meditate on the word of the Lord. That's it. But we have power to overcome the enemy, to outwit the enemy, to resist the enemy. But then we have to identify the enemy. And you need some, a sound mind to do that and that's why the word says you did not receive a spirit of fear you received a spirit of love and of power to numbers and a sound mind so you can keep it together when it seems like everything's falling apart praise the Lord for that <clears throat> now they are looking up in him even they want the Lord to, I don't know, come back. But the Lord told them to occupy until he comes back in the Gospels. Because imagine if you just had to st stay there and look up in the sky. Okay, we're waiting here, Lord. <laughs> yeah. That's going to take some time. So that generation that believed the Lord will come any time now. They stopped working. 
And I gave up there. Well, I remember one little girl I raised that wouldn't study because Jesus was going to come and she will just waste her time. Mm. <sighs> you know, they waited and they gave. Jesus told us to keep working, keep going. Do you think you'll miss him when he comes? No, no one will miss him when he comes. We'll know. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord. You won't miss it. It's okay. Go on with your business. You don't have to sit around waiting. It's a waste of time. We've got a lot of work to do in any way. Where is your Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria? Let's say, let's say your house is your Jerusalem. We know the statistics, but we also know the st statistics. It's wrong. <laughs> they say when the dad in the house gets saved first, if he gets baptized, he gets saved, he receives the Holy Spirit, the mother and the children will follow. No will follow. But if the mother gets baptized and saved first, chances are very few. And if one of the children gets saved first, even fewer for the rest of the family to come to the Lord. Why? One word. Pride. That's that which the devil gave. Pride. Oh, why should I listen to you? Because God is really good. You're just a woman. I don't have to listen to you. I don't listen to my children. You listen to me. And they will miss it. And that's sad. Where's your Samaria, your workplace, your Judea? The places wherever you go on vacation. Where? Do you carry the Lord with you? Do you? Take the dunamis power you have and do something with it. Actually reach out, grab that sheep by the throat and pull it into the fold. So you're not, never going to be quite right. You're such a special child. We just have to introduce you to Jesus. Mm, very special children. They have to come to Jesus. Why? Oh, it's such a horrible thing. They would say, oh, God, the Jesus sales pitch. My goodness, we are trying to save your souls. My goodness. They don't quite understand how real the spiritual world is. If they did, they would have bowed their knees already. They wouldn't have waited so long. They would have been worried about what if it was today and I did and Jesus didn't come on the clouds saying, Come children, and it's gonna be fast. We because Jesus said, Two in a field, one will be gone, the other one will stay. It's gonna be fast. You're gonna look at your friend, look back, and he'll be gone. Or she'll be gone. Because that is how quick it will be. Will the rest of the world see Jesus calling up his children? Probably not. Because if you read the book of Revelations, you will see quite a bit of um, chaos after that. Because the little children, they're just going. What if the mother and father called themselves atheists? or whatever they call themselves, the children will be going. The mother and father will be staying, not knowing where their children are. There will be chaos. Thank the Lord we will not be here to witness that one. I'm going to go with him. When he says, come children, I'm saying, well, yes, Lord. I'm done here. I'll meet you in the clouds. Bye-bye. If anyone else comes, Jesus also prepared us for this. If anyone else comes and says, oh, Jesus is over there. He's in the marketplace. He's in the temple. No, he's not. Because he will come on the clouds. 
the angels said it here. Jesus said it. It will be that way. There will be no, he's not coming back to do it all again. He got crucified once. That was enough sacrifice for all of us. We don't need more blood. He already gave us everything he had. His life. Don't follow antichrists. Antichrists. Um, read the next passage. Where are we? Okay. Then they returned to Jerusalem because staring up in the sky did not help. Okay. From the yield called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. Now just stop there. Why do they call it a Sabbath day's walk? <clears throat> the book of Acts records 30 years of church history. Did you know that? You can take the take that little book. Like, see how thick it is. It's from what verse? Mm. Just that little book. That's thirty years of records. That's not a lot. They didn't give us a lot. But I'm okay. mm. Why was it a Sabbath? day's walk why do they call it that they call it that because you <laughs> were not allowed to journey over a certain amount of steps on the sabbath do you remember we spoke about the sabbath if you spit on the ground and it rolls you worked you worked that was work oh goodness you're not allowed to look in a mirror because what if you see a grey hair and you want to pluck it out? That was work. That was the laws. Remember what Jesus said? The laws that the Pharisees and the... Uh, hmm? Sadducees. Not the Sadducees. The other one. Pharisees. Sadducees and Scribes. Scribes. Or, mm -hmm. Okay. That is what they wrote what they wanted people to follow. So they just keep adding to it. So what was a Sabbath day's walk? From the Mount of Olives, it was 2,000 <coughs> cubits, they say. I worked it out. I actually went to convert it, and I came to 914.4 meters. That was not considered work. One more step would have con you. Oh, mm -mm. you'll have to pay a sin offer, and there would be consequences if you walked more than that. Mm? Nine hundred and fourteen point four meters. That was a Sabbath day's walk. That is how far it was. That is all they were allowed to walk. Can you imagine every Sunday counting your steps? That's not so work. <laughs> I believe they created more work by saying you're not allowed to. I really do. I mean, you were not allowed to carry uh, uh, ink for a pen, more than it only two letters worth. How would you know? It looks like about two letters. I, mean, I don't know. This pen would be too heavy. I would not be able to carry it. There's too much ink in it. They really created a lot of work. But what I wanted to do is let's stop there. Let's go to, because you know what? The return of Jesus excites me. I can't help it. Let's go to Revelations 19. Mm. 
Oh, John had such a way with words. The Holy Spirit has such a way with words. <laughs> Revelation 19, verse 11. Have it. I saw heaven standing op open, and there before me was a white horse whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and makes war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. How beautiful. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Out of his mouth came a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations, and he will rule them with an iron scepter. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Amen. This is the army. It will be us. It will be us. Why? Because we were washed. We were washed white. Our clothing is white. We stand in front of the throne made the righteousness of God by the blood of Jesus Christ. We are dressed in white. And we will be behind him. And I wonder if my horse will be pretty. Okay, because I've been praying for a horse in heaven. I understand I can't have one in town. <laughs> I, I do. I do get it. But a horse in heaven, to have a white one, I think that we... It won't get dirty. Think about it. Because this will be the second time Jesus comes. Now, the first time, he will only come on the clouds to a certain area where he will call his children and we will go up to him. And chaos will reign and, and the word says that the, the gates of hell will be opened. It will be terrible to be here. We don't want to be here when that happens. We won't be here. But the second time he comes, I want to fight with the king of kings. I want to be in his army. I want to come with him. Mm -hmm. And I want to come on a horse, and he's going to strike down nations. I don't understand why people that calls themselves Christians will mock a God like this. Do they know he will be coming back? Do they know? Do they understand that Jesus that came in on the donkey as the king of peace will be coming next time on a horse to declare war on everyone. Calling yourself a Christian in that time will not do. He knows you. Saying, oh, but Lord, remember that, that we, we speak about it a lot. Jesus said, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. In your name, we cast out demons. He will say, I know you not. Go away from me. I know you not. You made a mockery of being a child of God. Sometimes I wonder what people think. I get carried away when I read because to us the coming of the Lord will be beautiful. It will be beautiful. It will be, <laughs> King is coming. <laughs> I'm going home. No more pain, no more tears, no more worries. 
No more. I have to go to work this morning. <laughs> Why do I have to? Oh, I'm going to snooze the alarm. No more of that. None of that. All just peace and joy and happiness and bliss with the Lord. All of that. But they make such a mockery of being Christian. I've seen enough of it for the last two weeks. I've had enough. I've had enough. I'm a Christian too. Uh, 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 uh. Really? You do not act like that. It doesn't look like Jesus. Uh, let's see. What does the devil do? The devil lies, steals, kills, and destroys. Not Jesus. The devil. You are supposed to be patient and kind, have no envy, do not parade itself, have no pride, not puffed up, do not behave rudely. That's your rules. That is what Jesus would have done. What are you doing and calling yourself Christians? That is why they have to soften the words that comes from the pulpit. That is why there is so much going on out there. New age churches, motivational speaking. It's not on the word anymore. It's only the little precious, ah, Jesus loves us. <laughs> Everyone goes to heaven. No, they do not. No, they don't. Why? Because there's a lot of people <laughs> that, um, Kajan once asked me, Mommy, the word says, no drunkard will enter the he he heavens. There will be no drunkard in heaven. And she says, Mommy, but why? I said, well, no. have you seen them in a bar? Have you seen, really seen a drunkard? <laughs> Do you really want, everyone is in heaven and we're worshipping and we're just loving the Lord and he's so beautiful and we're just worshipping him and this one drunk guy just goes around and says, hey, hey, you're looking at me, looking at me, but you're looking at me, huh, huh, what you're looking at? Mm -hmm. did, you, did, did you see my muscles? It's going to be strong and pretty and everything. Do you really want to deal with that in heaven? The Lord said there will be no frustration. There will be joy. They will, we will live in the Lord's light in bliss. And I do really feel sorry for people that have problems with alcohol. I understand what this world and this, these last generations did. To the people, I do understand. I've seen it. I grew up in it. I'm not a, <clears throat> I was not a sheltered little child and grew up like that and then became a pastor like that. I lived, I saw, I grew up in a house where Jesus was only used as a swear word. I know. My heart breaks for them. Someone that doesn't know. That is why our job, my job and your job is so important. How important is your job? Do you want your family, your friends, everyone close to you to be next to you in heaven? Or will you stay quiet? And not warn them, and their blood will be in your, on your hands, the Lord said. You, you will have to answer for their blood, because you knew. You knew what the Lord said about it, but you didn't say anything. I rather this world despise me and go to the Lord and be loved there forever than choose another path. I will follow the shepherd. Jesus Christ will lead and I will follow. Let us not miss the opportunity. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Thank you, Almighty Father. Thank you for your 
your blessing tonight, Lord. And thank you that we can move into the book of Acts, Lord. And how exciting it must have been while you were teaching them as the Messiah, as the raised Christ, as, as Jesus Christ. I would have loved to sit at your feet, Lord, and listen and take in. I think our minds has taken a lot of your power from us. Father, let us not forget that your spirit is with us. Let us not forget that he shows the way to Jesus. Let us not forget that we are not powerless in this world, that we are children of the mighty God. Jesus began and it continues still in his body. And we are your body, Lord. Let us remember that as we go out to Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Let us never forget. Let us make ourselves humble and reach out our hands to those still struggling, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word, your blood and your sacrifice to save us. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs>